Mary Jo, thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. Uh, IMFT, the community, we're all really excited for you to present at the, the conference in March. Um, before we get into the kind of a general overview of what you're going to be talking about and maybe a couple little teasers, uh, could you describe a little bit how you came into the field and um, you know what brought you into the work with trauma? Um, I can't decide if it's a good story or not in terms of how I came into it, but it's very much a uh, sort of feels like it was meant to be mm. in that uh, I was a junior at Northwestern. Okay. Girl from Indiana came up here to go to school and was yeah. a psych major and decided to, uh, and, and part of the psych major was we had to take a class called community psychology, which was mm -hmm. psychological issues, current issues that were impacting people in the community. And we didn't know what the topic was. You had to take it as a psych major. Hmm. Two-quarter class, didn't know what the topic was. You just signed up. Just so nice little there surprising. I was, yeah. junior, and the topic was child abuse and hmm. neglect because that in 1974 was a very important topic. The, the laws across the country where it was against the law mm -hmm. to abuse or neglect a child, mm -hmm. that people were mandated reporters. All that was new, DCFS was new and all growing, so it was picture. all new, yeah. and that was a, the topic that the professor had picked. Okay. And so we each had to pick an aspect of it, mm -hmm. and because I was always interested in the clinical, I started doing some interviewing and research on Parents Anonymous, hmm. which was a self-help program to help parents prevent themselves from abusing and neglecting. So it was, oh, okay. it was like an Alcoholics okay. Anonymous. You had sponsors, you had groups, there were hotlines. Right. And a new one was just starting in Evanston and in Chicago, mm -hmm. a new chapter of Parents Anonymous. And so I became very involved and ended up um, working there out of college. It was called Parental Stress Services at the time. And many colleagues that I'm still um, working with now, as a matter of fact, my co-author of my l new book that's coming out in May, hmm. I met at parental. St I met at Northwestern and met at Parental Stress Services. So we've been together for thirty some years. Wow! So it basically at the time it, we weren't talking about complex trauma. Okay. The word trauma didn't even come about. Right. PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder, was just being talked about okay. in terms of Vietnam vets. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really what we were talking about was interpersonal violence. Mm -hmm. And through the years, it developed into looking at interpersonal violence as part of trauma. The more we, with when people started talking about child sexual abuse and courage to heal came out, what we started realizing is that number one, violence in the family between couples, domestic violence, mm -hmm. child abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, was much more prevalent mm -hmm. than we had ever thought. And in fact, the impact of these violent interactions in families had a traumatic impact. Yeah. And that, that violence in the family was a traumatic event. And so that became the merger through the field, not just with me, mm -hmm. into talking about complex trauma. And still, though, we now talk about it in complex trauma. I think it's really important that we don't forget that what, what we're really talking about in terms of complex trauma is trauma that's compounded by other trauma by other trauma okay. that happened in the family. So okay. let me just say one final piece about just the overall idea of complex trauma. Sure. Is that it's not just the event Mm -hmm. that a parent hits a child, a parent sexually abuses a child, a partner hits or emotionally or financially abuses, it's also then the reaction to the context to it. Okay. So you have a parent that abuses a child and then the child doesn't feel like they can go anywhere mm -hmm. to, to tell anybody. Or the one parent doesn't believe another parent that the other parent did it. Or people are saying, you're making a big deal. That also becomes a traumatic event. So we have okay. a, often what we yeah. have in families is a physical or sexual traumatic event mm -hmm. that's then compounded by emotional and psychological and spiritual other tra traumas mm -hmm. by not being believed, by not being trusted, by saying you, you initiated it, you right. should change it. So it's really the reactions right. to the abuse 
or the violation that, that, that we're addressing in terms of complex trauma. And that's why it's so important to do family therapy mm -hmm. um, and to, to have couple therapy because it's, these abuses happen in the context of a family. Right, right. So just doing individual therapy isn't as effective. Right, because you're not addressing the in, the in, all the circumstances. Right, you're not right. addressing all the compounding tra traumatic events. Right. You know, I see clients all the time that have been abused as children, then are then that they talk more about the neglect. You know, I was sexually abused by my father, but my mother didn't believe me, and and then my siblings got mad at me because I told somebody, or mm -hmm. the te the school started as uh you know i would escalate and have behaviors at school because of what was going on at home and then i was getting in more trouble at school or i would became oppositional defiant or i was labeled this or that when mm -hmm. it was really about my own abuse and now i'm having trouble at work or i'm having trouble in my current marriages just or, layer and layer and layer right. and layer and that's what we really mean by complex trauma the complexity wow. yeah. all the variables that are the complexity to it um, so that, that's how I started. I was right. one of the first people in the state of Illinois to ever even do in-home counseling for abuse and neglect um, because my first, my first cases were all from the Department of Children and Family Services mm -hmm. when I was at Midwest Family Resource and I was doing in-home family therapy. Wow, so and going to their homes. And going into the them. homes. Right. As I've, I've said many times, which I'll probably even talk about it at uh, the conference, you know, I've spent more time doing therapy by watching soap operas hmm. and sort of looking at what's going on. And, and so much of the time, I, you know, I was watching some television show, whether it's, whether it's Homeland or whether it's, you know, um, Ray Donovan or any of these shows mm -hmm. where what were, they're all, it's all complex trauma. Yeah. It's it's talking about what goes on in their families, then what goes on in their workplace, then what goes on in their life. It's yeah. it's that's and it's really what we're talking about is interpersonal violence. I mean, one of the things that that I will talk about at at the conference is that I will we've done about twenty two years of interviews, of uh, follow up interviews, talking with clients, really asking them what's been the most effective therapeutic interventions for you mm -hmm. in terms of um, complex trauma, in terms of family violence. So we literally interview people all throughout therapy, sometimes at the end of every session, wow. you know, where we say, so what about this session? Mm -hmm. What I just got done saying to a client right before I met with you was, okay, so when you walk out this door today, what are you taking away from today? Um, so one of the things that what we heard, and I will talk about all the variables at the conference, mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that people say the most that's most effective about treatment is helping them have a meaningful vision of the future. Mm -hmm. Because when you're abused, it really makes you question people's intentions, right. people's integrity, what's this world about, who am I, what do mm -hmm. I deserve, it's about shame. Right. And so one right. of the pieces about therapy is really looking and working on the emotional and psychological and spiritual impact mm -hmm. it, it has on someone that they're being abused in an in a intimate, connected relationship. Right. And, and that's really important in terms of therapy because in therapy, we often can be experienced as someone that's violating um, hmm. and, and I'll spend a lot of time at the conference talking about that, okay. about how when you're abused in an interpersonal violent relation, an interpersonal relationship where somebody says, I'm here, I care about you, I'm, I'm in the role of wanting to take care of you, and then I violate you, mm -hmm. that's often what it feels like in therapy. And hmm. so people don't come in, those that have suffered from complex trauma, don't come into therapy open with trust and belief that this is going to be helpful. Right. Um, what they believe is you're a person who says you can help me, and in fact, you dependency dependency is dangerous. 
emotional connection is mm -hmm. dangerous when you've been abused. Well, it opens you up vulner you're yeah, vulnerable. Yeah, you're much right. and you're much right. more vulnerable if you've been abused. I mean, right. when you are abused in a family or in an intimate context, your belief about relationships is the they are very potentially dangerous. Hmm. And and that's a, and that is clinicians we have to be aware of. Yeah. What do we do that's dangerous? How are we perceived as dangerous? And and so many of the ways we even do use some of our models. And so what I'll be talking about at the conference is this the collaborative change model, mm -hmm. which is a model that I've developed. I started developing it back in 1982 or 83, mm -hmm. primarily with Terry Trepper, um, who's from Purdue. And, and since then, he's gone his direction. I've gone mine. I've continued to develop it. Yeah. Um, but the collaborative change model is a meta model mm -hmm. that you that the clinician can apply to any theoretical model you use. So, so is it kind of layer on top or layer? It's the way to organize treatment. Okay. okay. It's literally how to organize if you're a family therapist, how to organize. So let's say you're a couples therapist that does EFT. Mm -hmm. How do you organize EFT so that it is trauma informed, hmm. collaborative and, and sensitive to the interpersonal workings of violence. Yeah. Um, so, so it could be if I'm a family therapist, if I'm a couples therapist, mm -hmm. if I do EMDR, if I do, doesn't matter what kind of clinician, what kind of theoretical model I use. Mm -hmm. The collaborative change model is how to organize that particular model. One of the great things about doing IMFT is that I'm going to know like almost so many of the people there uh -huh. because I'm from Illinois and it's, right. I, I'm t completely honored and touched and flattered to be invited back um, to the conference to, to be one of the keynotes. So um, what will be exciting, I think, is that it's going to be a really familiar ex experience for all of us. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot of it, even as large as the conference is, I do, I'll have a lot of experiential. There'll be a lot oh, of time for people to practice some interventions, practice some things. I'll hmm. even show good old fashioned video. Yeah. Um, and what, what I'm going to talk about, what I will emphasize is some of the, the information that's in my and Linda's in my new book. Okay. And uh, Linda's, it's, I'm, I wrote the book with Linda Stonefish, who teaches marriage and family therapy at Syracuse. Okay. What's the and, title of your book? Uh, the title of the book is Treating Good. Complex Trauma, A Blueprint for Collaboration and Change. Wonderful. Wonderful. And that's exactly what I'll be talking about at the, I, at the conference, is I will literally be teaching the blueprint. Mm -hmm. It's very much like a blueprint. It's like looking at we're going to rebuild these families mm -hmm. and and in what order do you rebuild hmm. um, I mean there's there's an order to building a house there's an order to restructuring there's an order and there's an order a natural order for change mm -hmm. so one of the things that there's two things that people have often said about me one of my clients once said to me wow what you're doing is that you're saying to me there's a natural order to putting my life back in order. And I thought, there's the tagline for the, nice. for the model. Yeah. And another one, something that someone once said to me is, you know, when you, when you talk about the collaborative change model and when I teach it with clients, I mean, the clients are absolutely collaborative partners with me. And mm -hmm. that's what I will teach. Mm -hmm. How do you engage them in this collaborative process so they don't feel like therapy is something that's happened to, to them? them. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a process that's happening with them. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what, what, this, what we're going to learn, I think this is going to be a little exciting and different, besides that, that it'll be very engaging and we'll do experiential, and I really will teach the blueprint of how to, and it'll go great after Mona's. Mm -hmm. Uh, might be great if I had been before Mona's, but it doesn't matter because <laughs> even everything Mona's talking about, everything I talk about will be applicable to, to, right. to Mona's They're workshop. Right, like mesh very it'll well together. Completely, because yeah. it'll, it'll be about saying, so what did, what did you learn from Mona's? Now, how are you going to organize that right. into effective treatment? Nice. So um, one of the things that another person once said about the model is that it 
harnesses the natural order of change. You know, change is something that's really natural. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it happens every day. I mean, like everyone says, change is the most consistent thing we have in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you look at how change happens, whether it's how the sun comes up and goes down, how the moon, the cycles of the moon, a tree goes from a seed into a tree, then dormant again. If you look at any cycle of change, what, what the collaborative change model is, it basically says take the natural cycle of change, mm -hmm. for how nature changes, how a baby develops, how a tree develops, anything right. and apply it to the process of therapy okay so that there is going so what i'm going to teach is this rhythm of what i talk about is contract contraction and expansion okay um where you contract and you expand because that's the natural rhythm of change okay that that and so there's lots of different ways to contract in a session mm -hmm. there's lots of different ways for human beings to contract in a in, in their private life, and then to expand, hmm. and then to recognize, I need to contract. You're a meditator, mm -hmm. so you would understand that's exactly what meditation is. Hmm. Meditation is the contraction, the contraction part of your cycle of change. Hmm. So then you come out of meditation and you expand. Right. You you reengage. Mm -hmm. You take what you got, and from those moments of pause, those times of being quiet. Bring it into you're, the world. And you've taken it into the world. Right. And that's exactly what change is. So, <laughs> so it's, it's how do we apply that contraction expansion in the therapy session, and then how do you take that into the world? And, <laughs> and what clients, so what everyone will learn at, at the conference is, number one, how to recognize contraction and expansion, how to teach it, mm -hmm. how to harness it, and how to, to use it in, in terms of their own models of change. That's that's wonderful. Makes me want to do it. <laughs> that's exactly. Sounds like I already am. Didn't yeah, well, know. yeah, you you are, and that's exactly <laughs> you know that's 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 the best thing that you could say. I mean, that's what you know when I say at the end of, to my clients. Yeah, yeah. What you want is your client to go. That's what I want to do. Um, a very and that you'll appreciate this as a family therapist. One, I just got back from um, teaching in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And uh, social work and family therapy is relatively new in Vietnam. And one of, the, one of the organizers said to me, which I found is an unbelievable compliment, um, said to me, you know, when back in the day, because he was about my age in, you know, late 50s, early 60s, and he said back in the day when we would hear Don Jackson and uh, Waslavik, you know, people would go away from many of their workshops and say, that was really interesting. And then we'd hear Virginia Satir mm -hmm. or Carl Whitaker or Mnuchin, and people would leave the workshops and say, okay, let's go do it. And one of the thing, and what he said to me is, I feel like I'm sitting with Virginia Satir because after you talk, I want to go. Okay, let's go do it. <laughs> and what? And and so that's what will happen for sure at IMFT. And on top of it, that's what I want my clients more than anything. Yeah. I want them to walk out of the session and say, "I can do this. I want to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it." And then come back the next week and said, "I did it." Yeah. Or I had some issues, some trouble, some difficulties. Help me. Help me pause. Help me ponder and help me expand. That's great. Yeah, always moving forward. Right. Well, it sounds like you're going to bring a ton of energy into the conference. This I hope is, so. I'm really, now I'm really getting geeked out about okay. it. This is going to be great. Good. Yeah, thank you so much again for, for talking and with thanks me. Thanks for bringing, coming to, to the Center for Contextual yeah. Change.